Hey guys and welcome. So I've been wanting to do something new and different with Spore. I feel like Galactic Adventures is extremely underrated. There's a lot you can do with it and I really want to start incorporating it into my videos from now on. Don't worry, it won't be anything too insane, too, you know, over the top or crazy. But I think it's something that'll do like a really nice job of complementing my Spore creations by having them in custom environments. And I figured since I've been doing a lot of Monster Hunter creations lately, it probably makes sense that at least my first custom landscape I make for it would be something Monster Hunter themed. So I've decided to go for the Wild Spire Waste as my first one. So that's where I, where I am here in Monster Hunter right now. Just having a look around, just trying to get like a bit of a reference on the scenery. I don't want it to be too perfect. I just want to get inspiration and a bit of an idea, but not anything, you know, like incredibly accurate or extravagant. Just something I can put into sport and have a bit of fun with. So right now I'm just kind of surveying the environment and hoping I don't aggro the Paolumo. I do not have my controller. I'm not in the mood to fight. <laughs> But just have a look around in general because I want to get this very kind of like rocky terrain. I have already made a couple of environments already and a couple of landscapes. One of them is a desert oasis, but right now I want this big rocky desert canyon. A bunch of hills, a lot of dirt, a lot of stone. Debating whether I add the tunnel in there. I can do a cave in Spore, but I think it, it does look strange. It does look very, very strange. So it's probably not really worth doing. Have a look into the abyss, which is all just again more and more and more rock. A little bit of a slider down there, but I don't think that really needs to be included either. Keep having a look around, and then I think I'm about good to go into spore now. And now here we are in spore. So, like I said, I want to make a landscape environment that I can showcase creations into. So, for the first thing I really want to consider is the lighting, which is generally where the star is, because sometimes I do get carried away and it turns out the star is just in some random, you know, locked area that I can't really control. Fortunately, I think this little valley here is a little naturally created valley by the planet template that I've used. This seems to be a little good spot to do it in, so let's just quickly double check then. And so, where is the pivot? Uh, so it kind of goes in that direction. It's not too bad though. I think we could work with this. So, I, of course, you know, a little blink through a jowy for size. I do want to make sure that everything is vaguely to scale. It does not have to be as big as it was in Monster Hunter World because, again, I'm just loosely inspiring from it. I want it to be the world's bar based, but it doesn't need to be, you know, completely accurate. But I do want to make sure the overall scale is about right. That way, whenever I do use this in uh, future videos, things aren't you know, like horribly squashed and cramped because that's just going to completely ruin the illusion entirely. So the first thing that I really want to consider then is making this entire area into a bit of a canyon because maybe maybe I'll change my mind in the future but at least for the time being I feel like that if it's going to be you know these little areas to showcase things into they can need to be very large very wide but also very surrounded. I think it'll look kind of strange if um, it kind of trails off into the abyss and all you see is like the weird horizon. Spore isn't the best when it comes to its environment. It's pretty good, but it's definitely not the best. Now, as we saw in a little demonstration pan of the area, a lot of it is surrounded by this very large, very artificial looking rock. So that I can easily do. So in that case, in that case, what I want to do then is probably just have one there, another one over there. Because that will be very, very white. And as you can see for the Jowie there, that'd be like a nice little good size comparison. In fact, I think that alone might work for now. There are like a couple of little dips and hills and such all around the area, so I don't mind this ridge being right there. It's actually going to add to the effect. Is there like any little small petite ridges I can add? I guess this one here, the mouth cluster. It's a bit of a crater thing, but that's okay though. I don't really mind that. I would actually like for there to just be a bit of a, bit of a mountain, if you will, just around, I'd say, here. Because even though I will be covering a lot of it with artificial rock shortly, I do still want it to be like a bit of land as well associated to it. That way it's not completely, you know, it doesn't look like some artificial arena, even though it kind of is one. <laughs> and that way I can actually just have, you know, like a bit of a combination between the rock props and the terrain itself. There's also the little canyony hole thing uh, where the Diablos comes out of. I don't think I'll do that. I don't think I will. In fact, we already know that the planet is as small, judging by the water level, it's really as small as it can be. So I'm definitely not going to mess with that. But I do actually like the way that the sand cuts in. Now, if I undo the water level or remove that entirely, it becomes just one clean texture. But I actually... Oh, hold on. Let's try that again. I actually quite like that because it just looks like proper sand. And that's what I want in this area. It's a lot of sand. So, coloration. Let me quickly just get rid of all of these. The floor, the floor. 
Now for that, I do want it to be like a much lighter beige color. Uh, that's a bit pink. I want it to be very sandy. Yeah, there you go, kind of like that. But I do want it to be like the odd bit of gray here and there as well. So I'll just do that quickly and then make this one here gray. Bring it in. You can see how it kind of changes the coloration of the gradient of the ground. Bring that in there. Make that much darker. Bring it outwards like that. And then I can then cut it in with another bit like that. So now it's kind of a bit mottled. I think it's a bit dark. I kind of want to even add a little bit of blue in there. Oh, that's got a okay, very interesting texture, there, doesn't it? I also just want to add in a couple of these little... Where are they? Rivers, valleys, I think they're the hills. Yep, there we go. These little dunes here and there as well. Now these, unfortunately, I can't have these be very small or very subtle because Spore is, you know, it, it is just clunky. Realistically, if I were to be doing this all environmental things with the creations to showcase them in, realistically, I should do them in, an, you know, an actual software, something like Blender, but I don't know how. And honestly, I quite like the charm of Spore. I mean, I know it's very, very dated. It doesn't look the best. But it does have a charm, and I think it would be like the perfect place to showcase creations in is an okay, another spore environment. At least just my, my opinion. There you go, I quite like that. So now there's a lot more tan, a lot more orange, a lot more sand in general, and the rocks are now a bit more of a minority than they were a majority as they were previously. Now, now that I've got that in place, I actually kind of want the cliff here to be a bit more of the same darker grey. In fact, there we go, just like that. I think that alone looks really nice. So, because we're working with a desert, we can now move on to much more simpler assets, props, trees, rocks, etc. If I do something like a jungle, this would be really insanely over the top, which I will be in the future. <laughs> but for now, though, for now, for now, actually, I need to change the terrain to rock. I think there we go. If I make it just like a whole bunch of rock, that'd look a bit better. Now, I don't really have much in the way of kind of spiky... I guess almost like volcanic looking rock. I only really have these four here, so hopefully this will do. Which one's a bigger one? That one is. And as you can see, oh god, the texture when you look at it from afar, the texture is awful. And I can't scale it any larger, right? So that's the maximum size I can scale it for now. What I can do is replace it with the gate, and that would make it be able to scale a lot larger. But do this for the time being though. And so if I go ahead then and actually remove that, let's go back to my reference zone and just see how I want everything to be angled. I think if I were to have the entrance to the area, it'd probably be around here. <laughs> it looks very, very strange, but it kind of works. And that I can then have just covered in trees and rocks. In fact, maybe something like... If I just grab this one here, make that much larger. So what I'll be doing then a lot of is making the majority of the rock very, very large, but then have them kind of surrounded by lots and lots of smaller rock. That way it adds like a bit of a variety, while also, you know, covering as much ground as I possibly can, because... If I were to use like every individual small rock, that's going to take forever. It's going to lag out. But if I can get like a little bit lazy here and there, use these really large ones to do like the bulk majority of the work and the little small ones to accompany it as well and accent it, that's going to make like a really, really big difference. Now, this is the current idea I have so far and like a bit of a work in progress idea. And this should set in stone, pun unintended, <laughs> what I am after in regards to just the general landscape. It does feel a little bit small right now, but I think, then again, though, the Jowie is at default size, so I think if I was to make everything just like a little bit smaller, like all the creatures, I think it would work. Uh, if anything, I'm not really going to be using the entire area anyway, more like just shots and previews, so this should work in theory. Now, you'll notice a lot of the rock are all kind of pointing the same direction, which looks a little bit lazy, you know, copy paste. But then if we look back into the footage, and a reference of the Wild Spire Wastes, a lot of the rocks do actually point in a direction together. So it kind of works out actually, but as you can see, so now that we've got like all the top of it done, all the bits around the bottom where it meets the ground are just really, really ugly. So that's going to be my next priority is to neaten all that up and add on the smaller rock. Okay, there we go then. So it's looking a bit better. Now we're just looking very cluttered, <laughs> but at least we've got much more of the landscaping done. Now what it really needs is much more of the finer details. And one thing I've noticed a lot in the Wildspire Waste is it has lots and lots of stalagmites. So I should be able to add in a bunch of those all around the border and then start doing a little bit more of the more decorative rocks as well as a couple of trees and plants here and there. All right, so that's a whole bunch of stalagmites placed, all the various little rocks on the border. And now it just makes the transition between rock and the ground a little bit better. 
So now it's time to add in a bit more of the aesthetic rocks out here on there. Now for these ones, I think I might not ever really utilize this, but at least just for a bit of fun and a bit of accuracy. What I'm actually gonna do is disguise a bunch of crates as the rocks. If I go into here, and what kind of rocks I want them to look like? Probably rather long or tall, or in fact this one right here. There we go. A uh, reason being is that now what creatures can actually attack this and it will actually break down and explode. Which is kind of what happens, well, minus the explosion parts, but kind of what happens in the Wild Spire Waste is that the creatures can bash against a rock and break them. So if I ever wanted to, at least now I've got the option of having breakable rock if I ever need to. So we'll do one there, one there, bit of a cluster one around there. And next up, I do just want to add in a couple of little plants here and there too. So again, just like in the Wild Spire Waste, we'll have a couple of the little herb plants here and there. Now, I realise that <laughs> the more I work on this, the less and less it actually looks like the real thing. I'm glad I said so much earlier that I wanted a reference, not as like an actual legitimate, you know, recreation. But it does kind of make me want to, you know, really try and make a recreational version in the, f in the future. But that's okay though, like that's in the future. At least for now, at least for the video itself, we'll do something a bit nice and chill. The next thing I want is some kind of small little cactus-like plant. Okay, screw the little small little cacti for now then. We'll just have like a couple of little generic large ones here and there. Really give off that more density feel. So we'll have one over there, one over here. One or two in the middle as well, of course. So maybe like a small one there and another small one over there. I have that one over there. So I'm kind of just placing them all a bit randomly because I don't want anything to look, you know, really too similar or too neat or whatever. But I also don't want it to be too much foliage either. I do want it to look rather scarce. So perhaps one of these can be around the edges, like little mushroomy plants. There's one there, one there. Over there, like again, not really paying attention to where exactly I'm placing them. I just want them to be somewhat random. You can have one next to the big rock in the middle. Maybe even a smaller one next to it as well. Oh, didn't mean to have that up. That's, the <laughs> That's my shaders. And one more over there. So how's that looking so far then? It still looks kind of barren, so it looks a little bit plain. I think what it also needs is a couple of little herbs here and there as well, because in the Boswell Waste you do have like this much more taller, more scrawny looking plants here and there. I think a good substitute for that one actually would probably be this one here, because it's a nice dark coloration, or oh, it's very big. There we go, make it a lot smaller. I think that would do a good job of just, you know, sticking out from the environment and making everything just look a little bit different. And I do want to get a couple of bits of bone here and there as well. There's one down there. One over there. Now I do really want to use the fish skeleton prop but unfortunately that one as good of a skeleton as it is it doesn't really render properly in Galactic Adventures I'm not really sure why. I've noticed how it will only render if you're like really up close to it and it's kind of the opposite effect I want for like an environmental type of thing. Now what I also want just to give this a bit more of a sense of foliage at least dead foliage in this case is a couple of these more bramble like ones here and there as well just kind of adorning the area. That way, once again, the transition between the rock or the rocky cliffs and the ground doesn't feel quite as, you know, artificial. It feels like it's a bit of a border in between. Right, and there we go then. Now, the thing that really feels missing now is the fact that the sky is such a big blue colour. So for that, and also it just feels like kind of overpowering in general. So I think for this, what I'll do then is maybe just kind of lower the atmosphere level just a little bit. Maybe like that. And I do kind of want it to be yellow. But will that ruin it though? That's a big question. If I make it like a bit of a gloomy, bright yellow coloration, it does give off a bit more of a deserty kind of feel. I want it to look like very warm here. Very warm, very kind of barren or avid. So I think like that, that will about do it, I think. Yeah, I do like the way that looks in general. I think like from the ground down. So we go from the perspective of the Jowie and scroll in. I think that does look quite a bit better. Now, again, it may look like kind of plain. We are going for like a bit more of a density feel, so it does not need to be anything, you know, incredibly populated. But I do think that in a creation video, this should hopefully just be like a very nice background for the creation. It won't be the focus at all. It will just be the environment which the creation is showcased into. And I think that'd be a bit more interesting than, you know, like various test drive backgrounds. Ah, I think I know what's missing actually. It's a lack of any effects and any creatures. So for this, I actually kind of want, what do I want? I think I'd actually like maybe a couple of dust devils, maybe even a, where's a tornado one? So if I do this, get a great big tornado one and flip it upside down. That's the dust devils. Uh, let's try that again. 
And what that's going to do is create like a bit of an artificial wind everywhere. So that'd be quite subtle, but you can see just now the world looks a little bit more alive. And I'll do a couple of dust devils as well. So I'll just leave that to sit there for now. Can we spot any? Aha! There's a couple right around there, all around the side. So in that case, I'll move that a bit closer to the middle and make it a little bit smaller. There we go. Nice little dust devil, a couple of them actually all over the place there. Probably make it a little bit more deep into the ground. That way it's a bit more level, the rest of the environment. I'm also thinking, just for the sake of effect, maybe we'll do like a bit of smoke somewhere. So maybe do like a great big black smoke, uh, perhaps over here. So something's going on in the horizon. But can you even see it from a distance though? That's a big question. I don't think you can. So in that case, it's not really worth adding that in. But what I could add in instead, actually, is if I go into this, go into special, I can have these. Little bits of lava here and there. And that will create smoke. And for the last effect, I do want it to be some kind of animal. And now I can, of course, add in animals manually at the end of it, but I do also want that just to be like a more ambient kind of thing. I'm thinking like maybe flies or probably even butterflies to be honest, or even bees actually. Where can I find, yeah, right there. This maybe like a little swarm of bees, which I know is kind of random. But that should just, again, you know, like I said, make it look a bit more alive. Maybe one like there, one right there, and another one over there. And that, I think, go ahead and save and apply some shaders on. I think that would actually about do it. Right, so there we go then. It's a bit bright. <laughs> then again, though, it does look much more like a, you know, like a really nice looking deserty area. I like this, especially around this angle here. Because I've done everything quite randomly, some angles are going to look a bit more appealing than the others. I think this here looks really nice, probably mostly because of the lighting, but a bit because of the effect as well. Oh, until that happens. <laughs> yeah, I think what I will do is turn down the overall lighting just a bit. But, like, this is just a great big demonstration to see, you know, the idea that I have in mind of what I plan on doing a lot more of in the future. This area here needs a lot more work. Uh, what else? I think all of this here looks, like, really, really good for, like, a very, very barren area. Yeah, I like this. <laughs> I think I think this has got potential. I'm quite excited about this. And to finally showcase, you know, what it is I have in mind. And then very, very soon, like, actually show creation in here for the new type of videos. So I think it's going to be really cool. And I really, really do hope that you guys look forward to it as well. And like I said, Galactic Adventures is very, very underrated. This is the kind of stuff you can do in it. And I really do hope that more people give it a go. Because it is really, really good. And it's a good bit of fun. So... I'm going to call it here then, guys. As always, thank you all very, very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you give your own little landscape to try. And as always, <laughs> I will see you all next time. Take care and have a wonderful day.